So were Viking Berserkers real? Hello everyone, it's Takuya here and welcome back to the History of Everything podcast YouTube channel. The question that we just asked is the one that we're going to be addressing here today because it is something that, um, well I mean to be fair, it's something that has been debated rather extensively online and for years in many different academic circles. With varying groups swearing by different legends, but others decrying them as nothing more than the fanciful wishful thinking of those that wish to identify with something grand and glorious. Which I mean to be fair, we're talking about the Berserkers. These were guys who were feared for their ferocity in battle. They were terrifying, crazy warriors who had earned a unique reputation for their knack for violence. These were massive men with bearskin hoods, ones who would charge into battle recklessly without any form of armor, all the while in a trance-like fury designed to elevate them to a degree that is beyond human. In many instances, the stories would describe that the mere appearance of a berserker would be enough to either make an enemy outright surrender or to flee from battle scared for their lives. Well, at least that is the modern depiction of such men. The reality of things as it typically goes with history is that things are significantly more complex than we give it credit for. And I guess before we answer the question of were Berserkers real, we have to first ask ourselves what exactly is a Berserker in the first place? And this, I believe, is a good starting point when talking about these Norse warriors who themselves would go Berserk and then apparently go and attack anyone without any concern for their own safety. But really, as for who these guys were in the first place, well, the accounts seem to vary, but they seem to suggest that they were, for the most part, regular warriors with a special capability of entering into a type of trance that would allow them to elevate themselves in combat situations. Now, whether this was something that was done through alcohol or intoxicating substances, religious fervor, or something else that we don't really know, we don't actually know for certain what it is or if there even was one. What we do know is that during war, berserkers would conduct rituals such as howling like wolves and biting their shields before battle, things that would elevate them to this higher state of being and increase their ferocity and anger. The animal skins that they would wear would serve to mark them out and intimidate the enemy that they were going up against. And then once battle would begin, then the trance was entered and they would savagely attack anyone who was within range. In fact, many of the early stories about berserkers don't even really describe them as human. They instead describe them as magical beings that were capable of shape-shifting into different animal forms. Individuals who didn't only just wear the bear skin, but became the bear itself. And then supposedly the mere mention of berserkers had the power to make enemy soldiers break their ranks and run away. But if they were able to hold the line, then they would be able to turn the tides because the trance-like state the berserkers would enter into didn't really last that long. And then what would happen after leaving the trance, which again lasted for only a short amount of time, the berserker would then enter a state of exhaustion, becoming significantly weaker and from that easier to pick off. Thus really, it seems like the idea of a berserker in combat is more of a double-edged sword than anything else. But then that does bring us to the actual question that we were asking in this video in the first place. Were Berserkers real? Because I've talked at this point about a lot of the stuff for stories, but we haven't really addressed that. Well, it does seem that at some point they were real. Just not to the degree that stories, movies, and video games would like to depict them as, and what we think of them here in popular culture. But then again, of course, we're talking about things in history. That is really true for most things, so I can't really say much in that regard. But really, most of what comprised of the life of a Viking Berserker and their existence is a mystery, because their practices weren't recorded in detail, until the use of mind-altering states in battle and other things were outlawed by the Christian church which is a subject matter that we're going to be addressing here in a second because that's perhaps the most important detail about this entire video. There is actually a decent amount of archaeological evidence along with stories to prove that Viking berserkers were a thing in Scandinavia. It's just that they died out pretty quickly after Christianity came into power and the stories that we would then have about them are going to be incredibly warped because of this. I mean, you have to remember that at the time that this was going on, Christian writers who were describing things from history and about people were on a mission to pretty much condemn any kind of pagan practice that you could imagine. And as a result, you are going to see some very biased accounts of this kind of stuff in history. What we do know is that berserkers were inhabitants of Scandinavia, and it is written that they guarded Norway's King Harold I Fairhair as he had reigned from 872 to 930 AD. This account comes from a man by the name of Thorbjorn Honklofi, who described how Norse warriors that were bear-like and wolf-like would fight for their king. But it wasn't just the High King of Scandinavia, they would fight for any number of other kings or jarls or anyone who could probably afford to have them. Our Archaeological findings from this time specifically show that berserker warriors were elites. They were wild and reckless when fighting in battle, yes, but the accounts of them and how they would fight varied because you could have some that were naked and others that would be fully armored. It just entirely depends upon the depiction. As an example of this, Caspron's dyes depicting berserkers were discovered in Olin, Sweden.
Raiden, and these showed Berserkers with armor, but then other depictions that we have of them show them as naked, and so it really just varies depending on what it is that people have found, which is not enough. I really wish that we had a lot more than what it is that we actually have today. And even when you go way back to the first century AD, there was a Roman historian by the name of Tacitus who would describe Berserker-like warriors among the different German tribes. And then 500 years later, there would be another Roman historian by the name of Procopios who would write about the wild and lawless Heruli, which was another tribe that would behave very similar to what we would expect of Berserkers, as they would charge into battle more often than not in literally a loincloth. Fighting naked is actually a fairly common tactic that was used by different tribes and groups all over the world in history, but that's honestly probably something that would make a good video later on. There is also numerous mention of Berserkers in Norse sagas, skaldic poems, and other Middle Age literature that describes these places and events. The problem becomes that although we know we have some physical evidence and a lot of stories, most of the knowledge that we really have comes from a time when berserkers were already on their way out of society, with the cause of that death simply being Christianity, as I mentioned earlier. Again, I know that I said this earlier, but you have to remember that a lot of the people that were writing down history at this time in Europe were quite literally Christian monks. Individuals that, historically speaking, did not exactly have a very good relation with Vikings. And so it was really that over time, the Berserker would gradually become the stock villain of the sagas, someone who could be typified as murderous, stupid, and a brute. In fact, as an example of this, we have a work by Saxo Grammaticus, who was a Danish 12th century theologian, who speaks about such a group of people in his book, Gesta Denorum. Quote, The young warriors would harry and pillage the neighborhood, and frequently spilt great quantities of blood. They considered it manly and proper to devastate homes, to cut down cattle, to rifle everything, and take away vast halls of booty, burn to the ground houses they had sacked, and butcher men and women indiscriminately. And in addition to some of those more warlike aspects within their own communities, berserkers were also depicted as having a habit of sexual excess, if you will. Essentially things like carrying off daughters, wives, betrothed maids, any number of individuals who then had to be rescued by heroes within stories. And Saxo really hated this part about them. Quote, so outrageous and unrestrained were their ways that they ravished other men's wives and daughters. They seem to have outlawed chastity and driven it to the brothel. Nor did they stop at married women, but also debauched the beds of virgins. No man's bridal chamber was safe. Scarcely any place in the land was free from the imprints of their lust. Far from the heroes of old of the sagas, now at this point they were pretty much depicted as nothing more than villains and scoundrels. Which brings us to the point that it is from these changes in perspective and the rise of Christianity that we really begin to see the fall of the berserkers and their increased mystification among society. By the 11th century, many places started to outlaw berserkers as a concept, this being along with banning homganga or duels, something that I know that I'm probably mispronouncing, and for that I apologize. See, what had happened by this point was that these duels were a method for berserkers to use as a way to enrich themselves, it seems, as the story goes. They would go and challenge men of property to homgang, and then upon slaying that individual would be able to seize all of their wealth, their women, everything. Which, mind you, is a pretty difficult thing to counter, because if you refuse the request of a duel, then A, they could just outright murder you potentially, or simultaneously, the worst fate was that you could be labeled a coward, which in that society was a very dangerous and terrible thing for your family. So over time, legal codes would gradually begin to reflect this new type of perspective that people had. Back in the 12th century, the Icelandic Christian law stated, quote, if someone goes berserk, he is punished with lesser outlawry, and the men who are present are also banished if they do not bind him. For anyone confused about what exactly this is, lesser outlawry was a sentence of three years banishment from the country that one resided in. And in a place like Scandinavia, to be banished was a pretty dangerous thing, especially if you didn't have access to any kind of boat or anything and you just ended up dying off in the wilderness. At this time, as Christianity took over, to be a berserker was to be classified as someone who was a heathen, someone who used magical practices, and this is something that was not approved of by the church. By the late 12th century, the berserker and the Odin-centered religion that they followed, the animalistic appearances, the inhuman frenzy upon the battlefield, the terror which they instilled into their enemies, all of this just gradually seemed to disappear. The Berserker, just like their patron deity Odin, was at this point reduced to nothing more than a story. A story that began to fall aside as a new faith began to dominate the countryside and the hearts and minds of people. But everyone, this has been Stakui with the History of Everything podcast. Thank you very much for watching this episode. I ask that you like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know in the comment section below what it is that we should be doing next, and any other ideas that you all have for future videos. I would love to see them. This was a harder video to create in the first place because normally I try to cover stuff that has a little bit more of concrete history, and when we talk about something like the Berserkers, as I said, they're real, but simultaneously, we cannot say to what degree they actually are. Therefore, I guess it's kind of like a mystery. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you'll have a good rest of your day. Goodbye, everyone.